It seems to me, Your Honor, that the um, lady standing to my right is trying to challenge the foreclosure. That time period has well passed, and this is not the court to do that. Yeah, that we're in the wrong court. No, no, we're not, Your Honor. Yeah, because I'm not a tenant. I'm okay. a owner. Well, that's just the characterization of landlord and tenant. But it's There's for no anybody country. that's in premises where they don't have the right to possess them. They can come here. And the right to possess is based upon who has the deed, basically. And in this case, they're saying they got a sheriff's deed because the property was properly, they claim, properly foreclosed upon. No, it was if not. you're challenging the foreclosure, I don't know what you're claiming that's wrong with the foreclosure. Well, there are no was separated from the mortgage, number one, and we can't do that. Okay. And, and Your that's, Honor, that's, that's against the law. Every, when you purchase a home, there is a promissory note and there's a deed that is provided. Um, those are two separate and distinct things. We are not discussing that. We are discussing whether or not my client has the legal right to uh, possession of that prop of this property, um, and that there is no defense. It is. It is a defense. Well, well ma'am, you perfect. said you filed another case about yeah, to well, quiet I mean, this title because you believe something was wrong. With oh, them. yeah, no, I'm not I believe. I have proof. I have a. So, where's the other case pending? That's what I'm trying to. I was trying to get down there to file that. I just haven't made it. But I will be there this week for sure. Because okay. right now, I, all I have is what they provided to me. And I didn't send you a copy of what I had sent them when I tendered the payment and they sent it back. But ma'am, did you, I don't know what you mean by payment. He says it wasn't a check. What well, was it? Okay. It was a negotiable instrument that could have been used as a check, but it was. Well, what was behind it? What kind of negotiable instrument? Well, it was, it was connected to the treasury. Right. And May I approach the, the treasury? Like the U.S. treasury? It, well, the Michigan treasury, not the. Not the big one. I, I, would, I would ask, um, is this what you're I'm holding in my hand a uh, document that said this is a non cash item, not a check on the top. Um, and may I approach your honor so you can take a look? This is what we're discussing. Okay. I don't know what this is. It's got some numbers on it. It's not drawn from a bank. It's not. It's not a check. It was going to be drawn from payable through Tracy Moore and done in good faith. That's her address. It says it's paid to HP foreclosure, and then it has yeah, the United it, States Treasury, yeah, Pennsylvania yeah, Avenue, cool. real property for set off an adjustment, and it's signed by Miss Moore without recourse. This is void where prohibited. Non cash item. Per 12 CFR subsection 229.2 U12 and 4. And it says here, this is a non cash item as defined by that section I just said of CFR and issued according to 12 CFR 229.2 K3 and 4. Non cash item is an item that would otherwise be a check except that a passbook certification or other document is attached. Or it's accompanied by special instructions with a request for special advice or payment or dishonor, or it has not been pre-printed, pre-printed or post-encoded in magnetic ink with the routing number of the paying bank. I believe in other words, it's, it's a piece of paper. It's not a negotiable demand draft by the U.S. Treasury, a demand draft drawn it's on the, the state. Thing government or unit of general local government that's not payable through a bank. Okay, I mean, you you just, I don't know what this is, but you said that no money accompanied, accompanied this. So, and this was, I don't know when it was dated, June 10th. Mm -hmm. It was within the time period. But, but, but they held it and then well, let me ask you this. Where, where were they supposed to cash this? Well, they would have sent everything to the treasury. It was all the, the original, it was everything. All they had to do was just 
send it to the treasury. And the treasury has $153,749.99 since it belongs to you, that then they were just going to pay them out. Yes. Okay. I don't see how that could happen. Well, they, we, we wouldn't know because they sent it back. Because we can't, my client can't do anything with that. Well, why, when I called, why didn't they say that? They held it for two weeks. They don't and need then, to do anything with that. It's not a payment. If there was a payment, they would have to accept that payment. There, it's, well, there was no payment. So, um, other than your issues thinking that something's wrong with the foreclosure itself. Oh, yeah. If I, if I have a, I had a securitization on the okay. and it, it shows it. And, well, well ma'am. In the, in the, um, I guess my question is this. If I'm going to have a trial, which is what today's date was originally scheduled for, I just see some real question of fact. I'm not exactly seeing it. I got a sheriff's deed, and I know it's a redemption period of six months. You got this, which is, to my knowledge, not any type of uh, cash item. And I don't see how they could, where they would take it to even try to remit or cash it. <laughs> I mean, it's like I could. I don't know where you got it from, but it says the document has a background and micro printing, and there's an artificial watermark on the reverse side. I have no idea where you got this and how they were supposed to cash it. Just needed to send it in. And I would like to know how how do they have title if I'm living in the home? I thought nine tenths of it was possession. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I can tell you that they went through what is known to be a valid process in Michigan, which how? is a foreclosure by advertisement. That is so not constitutional, and that was why I had brought up your oath also to kind of make sure that I got a little uh, help because you took an oath to uphold the Constitution. And you know, I, I'm very fully willing and able and capable of doing that. But where's the constitutional issue here? Well, that's this, is a, this is a matter of Michigan statute. No, but it's not a law. Statutes are not laws. Okay, well, then what are they? What do you mean, what are they? If they're not laws, but they're on the they're book. Not, they're, they're on the books guys, as laws in the state. Not so I'm guys. not sure if they're not laws to you. What are they? No, I mean they're laws in a sense, but not laws by the Constitution. They, they're not laws made from Congress. Congress makes the. Well, ma'am, there's 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 federal law and there's state yes, law. Yes, yes, but, but state but, comes from the federal. No, it doesn't. Maybe it comes no, from it. Not, do you realize not, you got 50 sovereign states here that yeah. can do their own thing, Correct. separate and aside from what the federal government does? And they do it all the time. All the time. What they can't do is something that is a constitutional violation of their state constitution or the federal constitution. I don't see what this is a violation no. of a constitution. Just to foreclose on property when the pay when the bill hasn't been paid. When it was foreclosed unlawfully from Huntington, they didn't have a right to foreclose. They separated the note, and that's a known fact. They never recorded the note; they recorded the mortgage. And you're not supposed to do that. That was what that's what part of the affidavit said on the man, um, the gentleman that did the audit for. Me. That is not lawful. And Your Honor, if that's the case, there was plenty of time to challenge that in the circuit court. Um, this is not a forum for that. The time has lapsed for that to be challenged. You know, it's fraud. It's, it's, it's always a challenge and fraud. That's you know, fraud. I've got some case law somewhere on the fact that, you know, the time to challenge these kinds of things in the foreclosure 
would be during the time that you have redemption, it would be at the circuit court. I mean, at this point, the redemption period is over, but if there's something that went wrong with it, the circuit court could 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 rule on it, but you don't even have a case there. Sure. I will. I'm working on it. Well, you know, ordinarily, I mean, this would be the trial date, but I just don't see where the issue of fact is that would require us to actually have a trial in this instance. Well, I'm asking, can you give us a trial date, please? This is the trial date. Oh, okay, I just misunderstood. Yeah, this is the trial date. And of course, I'd have them call witnesses if I thought it was necessary, but I don't see where it's necessary. I mean, all the documentation he has looks good and... You don't have any documentation that says this is not good, except for your statements that you believe are accurate. And if you wanted to file something, you have plenty of time to file something, Ms. Moore, to challenge this in the proper court. This court just says, was there a proper foreclosure? You know, did they follow? There, there, there's just a process, there's procedures. You know, when they file it, they have to give certain notice, do certain things, give a redemption time. They they still didn't do that properly. Well, what didn't they do? Well, they were supposed to have served me, and they didn't. They served you or what? Served me on the first paperwork. They were sticking stuff on So you say it was never noticed in any kind of way? It wasn't tacked? No, I'm not saying never, but I wasn't personally served. You don't have to be personally served if they can't find you personally. They have alternate means to tack and yeah, do things. They didn't really. But still, this. Did you want to add case, something? No, Your Honor. I'm just asking for a judgment to issue. You know, I. Okay. Well, the court is constrained to have to grant his relief because they don't see the issue of fact here for trial. Uh, it appears based upon the review of all the uh, documentation that's been provided that there was a valid foreclosure sale. Redemption period has passed. Uh, there was some type of something proffered that doesn't appear to be known legal tender for, for the, I guess, the redemption amount. And if there is any question about the foreclosure itself or the validity of this tender, I think at this point it should have been uh, litigated at the circuit court. So I'll go ahead and get the judgment of possession for the plaintiff. I Yeah, and you'll have, um, after I sign this judgment, you'll have 10 days to file an appeal. The writ date will be. Um, if it, well, if I have the judgment today, I it's going to be here. December 7th. And that's the appeal date. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm.